Chapter 20 The Secret Panel We were tricked right enough, shouted Detective Ludwin, but I'll get that fellow. Hoping to capture Melvin Ostrander before he could escape from the building, the policeman darted down the stairs towards the street. How did Ostrander get away? Cassidy demanded gruffly. He was bound hand and foot. I tested the ropes myself, yet I distinctly felt him jerk free. So did I, declared Mr. Parker, just an instant before he gave that unearthly scream. Dad, have you noticed? asked Penny quietly. Spider's missing, too. Yes. Where is that hunchback? demanded Detective Cassidy, his anger mounting. No trace of Spider could be found. Detective Cassidy searched the rooms carefully and even investigated the third floor above Osander's quarters. He tapped the walls and examined the flooring for possible trap doors. It sure beats all, he muttered. Door locked from outside, no secret exits, yet both Asandra and his assistants disappeared right from under our noses. This will make me look mighty bad. There must be a secret exit. If only we could locate it, declared Mr. Parker. Osandra didn't evaporate into thin air. This cabinet has a suspicious appearance, Penny remarked, pausing before it. Detective Cassidy already had examined the throne chair and a large piece of inlaid furniture directly behind. It's a queer-looking contraption, he agreed. Can't discover anything out of the way about it, though. It's just an empty cabinet. Yet, it must have been here for a purpose, Penny declared. She opened the door and peered inside. As Detective Cassidy had said, the cabinet was quite empty, and there was no evidence it had ever been used. Suddenly, Penny bent over to study something on the floor of the quaint cupboard. She gave a little exclamation of astonishment. Find something, Penny? asked her father. A large footprint, Dad. Let me see, exclaimed Detective Cassidy. Penny pointed to the mark on the base of the cabinet. It's a footprint, all right, he cried. Oh, Sandra must have escaped through this contraption. But how did he do it? Here's another mark, cried Penny, indicating a slight smudge on the back of the cabinet. It looks as if a hand might have been pressed there. She placed her own fingers over the mark and gave a slight push. The wall of the cabinet immediately swung backwards. A secret exit, Cassidy shouted. Stooping to avoid striking his head, he stepped through the opening. Penny and her father followed. They found themselves in a narrow space which had been built within the thick walls between the rooms. Only a few steps, and they came to a doorway which Detective Cassidy opened. The three emerged upon a fire escape leading down to the alley. Well, we've learned how Sandra managed to get away, the detective remarked, but it still puzzles me how he could have rid himself of those robes. He seemed to be securely tied. The assistant may have helped him, Mr. Parker suggested. That's probably what happened, all right. Penny had an opinion of her own, and a far different one. But fearing that Detective Cassidy would laugh at her, she kept her thoughts to herself. At the foot of the fire escape, they met Detective Lugman, who had just rounded the building. Not a trace of Osandra, he reported. Say. How did you get here so quick? Down the fire escape, Cassidy explained. We found a secret exit. While the detectives talked with her father, Penny noticed a street urchin standing not far away. She moved over to him, inquiring if he had been in the alley for very long. What if I have, he demanded suspiciously. I thought you might have seen a man who came down the fire escape a moment ago. Sure, I seen him, answered the urchin. Are those cops looking for someone? Yes, for Osandra, the medium. Oh, I know the guy, said the boy. Ah, it wasn't Osandra who came down the escape. Can you describe the person who did? He was a little short guy with big broad shoulders. I wonder if it could have been Spider, Mr. Osandra's assistant. Oh, I know that little hunchback too, the urchin replied. It wasn't Spider. This man was large, and he was carrying a heavy sack. A big sack? Penny asked quickly. Sure, it was a real big one. 
And you're certain that it was heavy? Sure, the man staggered when he carried it. He dumped the sack into a car and drove away. Satisfied that she had learned information of vital importance, Penny summoned her father and the two detectives. She repeated the urgent story, and a few questions convinced Detective Cassidy that the boy was telling the truth. Did you notice in which direction the car went, he inquired. The urchin thought that it had turned left from the alley, but he could not be certain. He could add very little information to the facts already given Penny. Dispatching Detective Ludwin to make a complete report at headquarters, Mr. Cassidy drew Penny and her father aside. This looks serious, he said gravely. I don't know just what to make of it. At first I assumed Osandra had tricked us. Couldn't he have met with foul play? Penny asked quickly. That scream of terror? Just as I was about to say, Detective Cassidy interrupted, someone bent upon vengeance may have spirited Osandra out of the room. A real flush and blood spirit, too. The only exit was through the cabinet, declared Mr. Parker. Could anyone have known about it except Osandra? His assistant spider suggested Penny. Yes, I imagine he must have known about it. He hated his master too, Dad. Why do you say that, Penny? Do you have any evidence? Spider always watched Osandra with hatred in his eyes, or so it seemed to me. That hunchback was an ugly-looking character, said the detective. I made up my mind to check up on him before all of this happened tonight. Still, I don't see how he could have spirited Osandra away. The urchin claimed that he saw a man, and it wasn't Spider, Mr. Parker commented. Would it have been physically impossible for him to carry Osandra down the fire escape? Well, the medium was bound, Detective Cassidy replied thoughtfully. Yes, it would have been possible, though I grant you highly improbable. I believe Melvin Osandra feared something like this might happen, Penny said. Ever since that warning voice cried out in the darkness, he has seemed very subdued. He was nervous this evening, agreed Cassidy. I noticed it right away. I'm beginning to think his disappearance is all part of a diabolical scheme. But who planned it, I can't say. Our work is cut out for us. Well, I wish you luck, Mr. Parker declared. If I can do anything to help, let me know. Just keep this out of the papers for 24 hours, the detective requested. If you will, I believe I can promise you a big story. You may depend upon me to cooperate, Mr. Parker agreed. I'm more interested in solving this case than getting a scoop for the star. Penny and her father went back into the building for their wraps. Detective Cassidy accompanied them, locking all the doors. Then he declared he must go back to the police station. If anything develops, I'll let you know, he promised. Penny waited until the detective had left, and then she said to her father, Dad? There is one person who might throw light upon Sandra's disappearance. You mean Miss Harmon? Yes. Let's go to her hotel now and learn what she knows about this affair. You took the thoughts right out of my head, Mr. Parker declared with a broad smile. Penny, we'll do a bit of sleuthing on our own. Do, 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 do.